Unit Sixteen. Lesson Thirty One. Exercise. Gump went to Maya Chocolate Shop to apply for the job as chocolate maker. First, he was asked to fill in a questionnaire about his personal information. Well, hello. I've come to apply for a job as a chocolate maker. Great. First, you need to fill in this application form. I can help you if you like. Okay. How old are you? I'm twenty-two. Well, firstly, have you ever done this kind of work before? I used to help my aunt make chocolate at home, and I really like chocolate. And I know the names of every brand, so I can help people when they are choosing what to buy. Well, that is certainly helpful. Next, what qualities do you have that make you qualify for this position? I'm reliable, and I'm always on time. That's good to hear. Can you tell me about any previous work experience? I've never had a job that paid regular wages before, but I have experience doing odd jobs. What do you know about the chocolate industry? Well, I know there are different kinds of chocolate: bitter chocolate, that is really high in cocoa, milk chocolate, and then white chocolate, which isn't really chocolate at all. I know that good quality chocolate can also be good for your health because it has lots of vitamins in it, as long as you don't eat too much. That's right. That's a really good answer. It seems you know quite a lot. Why do you think you could be suitable for this job? Well, I think a box of chocolates is just like life. You never know what you'll get. I hope I can share my love of chocolate and life with others, and make your business just as successful as it can be. Unit Sixteen. Lesson Thirty-Two. Exercise. After completing questionnaire, Gump went to see the boss. Hello, Gump. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I've been looking at your application form, and I'm very impressed. I especially like your comment about life being like a box of chocolates. I'd like to offer you the job. Can you start now? Yes, that's wonderful news. Firstly, I would like to talk about the philosophy of this company. We pride ourselves on producing the highest quality products. Our customers demand the finest chocolate, and we have a policy that if a customer is unhappy with something they buy here, they can get their money back and a free box of chocolates as well. I think that's a great idea. So of course it is important that we maintain good standards. Or we would quickly go out of business. I understand. When we recruit new employees, we are looking for people who not only have experience and a love of chocolate making, but also who have a passion for life in general. I think you possess all those qualities. Unit sixteen. Lesson thirty one. Exercise one. One. Distinguish between similarly pronounced words, and choose the word that is read on the tape from A to B. One. Can't. Two. Lock. Three. Hostel. Four. Horrid. Five. Bite. Six. Bit. Seven. Arrives.
Eight. Fit. Nine. Tearful. Ten. Harsh. Exercise two. You will hear the sentences below, but only one of the italicized words will be spoken. Circle the one word which you hear. One. She was leeching when I called. Two. The man was watching the base. Three. We saw a girl with cash. Four. He was washing his car. Five. They were going to sue it. Lesson thirty-two. Exercise one. Listen to a story on the tape. Answer the questions below with yes, no. Easter Sunday was a cloudy but festive day in Memorial Park for about a hundred kids from local orphanages. An Easter egg hunt started at ten a.m. when a fire engine blasted its horn. Boys and girls, ranging in age from two to six, dashed throughout the park, yelling and screaming. Walking and running, and quite often falling down. One little girl, Amanda, found her first egg less than a minute after the horn blew. Instead of putting it into her basket and continuing to search for more, she sat down. Then she spent the next ten minutes examining it, unwrapping it, and eating it piece by piece. When she finished, she put the wrapper into her basket. Wiped her hands on her white dress and went to hunt for another egg. Meanwhile, Jeff, one of the older boys, filled his basket to overflowing. He asked one of the firemen to hold it for him, and then took off running for more candy eggs. As soon as he found some, he put them into the basket of the child closest to him. Two little toddlers both saw a candy egg at the same time, and they both bent over to pick it up. They banged heads, and both of them sat down bawling. A couple of volunteer nurses picked them up and told them that everything was going to be all right. By eleven a.m., the search was over. Most of the kids were studying their candy, exchanging it with others, or eating it. But then the fire engine horn blasted again, causing three-year-old Jenny to cry. A fireman on a bullhorn. Told everyone to gather around, because a special guest had arrived. Once everyone was settled, the Easter Bunny climbed down out of the fire engine. The bunny was six foot six tall. Most of the kids cheered and ran toward him. Even Jenny stopped crying for a moment. She stared at the bunny and at all the kids running toward the bunny. Then she started crying even harder. The Easter Bunny hugged the kids, and they hugged him. Then the Easter Bunny sat on a fire engine step, and one by one the kids came up, sat on his lap, and got their pictures taken. After that, the older kids were allowed to explore the fire engine itself. The festivities ended about three p.m., when the orphans climbed into the buses for the return trip home. Most of them said they had a fun time. Six-year-old Sarah asked, "Can we do this every Sunday?" And more than one boy asked, "Can I drive the fire engine next time?" Exercise two. Listen to a story on the tape. Answer wa questions below. Easter Sunday was a cloudy but festive day in Memorial Park, for about a hundred kids from local orphanages. An Easter egg hunt started at ten a.m. 
when a fire engine blasted its horn. Boys and girls, ranging in age from two to six, dashed throughout the park, yelling and screaming, walking and running, and quite often falling down. One little girl, Amanda, found her first egg less than a minute after the horn blew. Instead of putting it into her basket and continuing to search for more, she sat down. Then she spent the next ten minutes examining it, unwrapping it, and eating it piece by piece. When she finished, she put the wrapper into her basket, wiped her hands on her white dress, and went to hunt for another egg. Meanwhile, Jeff, one of the older boys, filled his basket to overflowing. He asked one of the firemen to hold it for him, and then took off running for more candy eggs. As soon as he found some, he put them into the basket of the child closest to him. Two little toddlers both saw a candy egg at the same time, and they both bent over to pick it up. They banged heads, and both of them sat down bawling. A couple of volunteer nurses picked them up and told them. That everything was going to be all right. By eleven a.m., the search was over. Most of the kids were studying their candy, exchanging it with others, or eating it. But then the fire engine horn blasted again, causing three-year-old Jenny to cry. A fireman on a bullhorn told everyone to gather around, because a special guest had arrived. Once everyone was settled. The Easter Bunny climbed down out of the fire engine. The bunny was six foot six tall. Most of the kids cheered and ran toward him. Even Jenny stopped crying for a moment. She stared at the bunny and at all the kids running toward the bunny. Then she started crying even harder. The Easter Bunny hugged the kids and they hugged him. Then the Easter Bunny sat on a fire engine step. And one by one, the kids came up, sat on his lap, and got their pictures taken. After that, the older kids were allowed to explore the fire engine itself. The festivities ended about three p.m., when the orphans climbed into the buses for the return trip home. Most of them said they had a fun time. Six-year-old Sarah asked, "Can we do this every Sunday?" And more than one boy asked. Can I drive the fire engine next time? Exercise three. Dictation. One. It was a cloudy but festive day. Two. About one hundred kids were from local orphanages. Three. A fire engine blasted its horn. Four. She found it less than a minute after the horn blew. Five. She wiped her hands on her white dress. Six. Jeff filled his basket to overflowing. Seven. They both bent over to pick the candy egg up. Eight. They said that everything was going to be all right. Nine. 
everyone gathered around because a special guest had arrived. Ten. The kids sat on his lap and got their pictures taken.